It begins with troubled kids. Some, too young to see an R-rated movie, were said to be into sex and drugs. Many others were general misfits, thought to be out of control. Now, if you could no longer control or handle your child, what would you do? Well, some parents from around the country have sent their problems to a church school in Loosedale, Mississippi. But now it's said that the school is out of control, that its philosophy of corporal punishment has degenerated into bizarre, twisted forms of discipline. To top it off, it's run by a Christian minister. The story has been unfolding for months, but tonight Tom Jowell shows us what's been happening in Loosedale, Mississippi. Watch and form your own opinion. I stand at the church house in Loosedale, Mississippi. beautiful church on a quiet country road but behind the peaceful facade a controversy rages over whether the church leaders here have gone to extremes with the old saying spare the rod and spoil the child the children here range in age from 9 to 18 boys and girls who have one thing in common problems at home I don't know why some of you came from New York I don't know why some of you came from Chicago all the way down to Loosedale, Mississippi. The only thing that I can figure out is that the Word of God, it's God that brought you here, and that it's God going to have to transform your life into being something for Him. The Reverend Herman Fountain, Brother Fountain as he's known here, says he has a mission to save these children. They came from all over the country, sent by parents who despaired of handling their problems alone. Some of the kids were on drugs, others in trouble at school or simply rebellious. Spiritually, you're down the tombs. And that's why your moms and your dads have sent you to this very place right here. Well, it was, it was... Herman Fountain came to Mississippi from Texas 11 years ago. A former heroin addict, he founded the Bethel Church and School on the site of what was once a nudist colony. It sounds determined, it's because he and Bethel are battling for survival battling a storm of serious charges that range from illegal imprisonment of children to brainwashing and actual physical abuse. You bend over, touch your toes, and each swing the switch back and it hits you however hard it wanted to. Very painful. Lead marks. And left louts. I hate them. <laughs> Flat out, I hate them. I waited until everybody wasn't looking, and I turned around and took off. And about 45 minutes later, they caught me. Despite stringent security and severe punishment for those who even talked about running away, youngsters still fled from here, sometimes going through the back of the property, escaping through thick woods and briars. At other times in the middle of the night, they would slip down this road, eventually reaching the small nearby community of Loosedale. It was an almost constant stream of runaways reaching Loosedale that first called the attention of the authorities to Bethel. Many, many of the children have had marks on them, uh, the result of whippings or what they call licks with a switch. Sharon Barton is an officer of the county youth court. She's been dealing with runaways from Bethel for 10 years. We've seen photographs taken that show severe bruises and marks on the buttocks and on the legs. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. Mm -mm. Yes, I have. And these were from youngsters who had run away and yes. uh, who would come to you for help? Yes. The runaways' complaints prompted a youth court hearing in June. Reverend Fountain refused to answer questions about the children's treatment, citing separation of church and state. The judge said he had no choice. He ordered all of the children taken out of Bethel. Can you, can you believe this? Can you believe what's going on? We're all on this bus right here. State Welfare Commissioner Thomas Britton took custody of the children. With Bethel, we did not set out to close it. We set out to make sure that those children who were being mistreated uh, were, in fact, uh, put under protective care. We want to live here. We want to be with the Word of God, which is the right way, because all these people are going to hell. Tempers flare. Stand before God, ladies. You're going to stand before a living God. A living God. One that will send you to hell, ladies. Amen. Reverend Fountain and 10 of his supporters were arrested for resisting the police. It was the second time in eight years the youth court had intervened at Bethel. The court adjudicated several of these children to be abused and neglected. 
Mark Maples is the county prosecutor. The judge ruled that based on the testimony from child after child from this witness stand, that the punishment a majority of these children had received by the Bethel leadership amounted to cruel, extreme, unreasonable, and disgraceful punishment. I'm tired of what the devil can do to my life. I'm fed up with sin and the wages of sin. The court removed the children who were here in June, but Bethel is still open, still accepting new students. The judge had no power to actually close it down. I've got one thing that the world don't have. The state has no regulatory authority here. Church schools and homes require no license or registration in Mississippi. And Herman Fountain wants to keep it that way. What would be so terrible about being under state regulation? Doesn't someone outside of you and your immediate staff here have uh, a right to know the names of the kids who are here, the numbers of kids who are here, why they're sent here? Don't they deserve to know more about what's going on here since you were dealing with the adolescents? They want their foot in the door. That's what they want. Look, it'll be the, it'll be the children's homes, Sunday schools, and then it'll be the daycares, then it'll be the, uh, and then it'll, eventually it'll be the church. What is your mandate as far as bringing kids that uh, basically seem to be out of control at home into control at Bethel? Well, we have a very regimental daily routine. They fall in line just like they would in the Marine Corps. We learn laps, uh, corporal punishment as far as licks, and uh, we have a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of ways of discipline. As soon as I got through there, I shaved my hair off. I was put on watch. Was that was Ray Friary's introduction to Bethel. He's now 18 and out on his own, but he spent over a year there. You never saw a newspaper. You never saw a magazine. You know, we, we were sitting around talking, and we was thinking we wouldn't know if World War III started, you know. How much did they cut your communications with the outside, with your family? Um, everything was censored. Every, everything was, your letters were always open. You couldn't never, you know, try and write my parents and tell them about what was going on, and it never got to them. You were put on a construction detail. Now, what was that work like? When you first get there, you were put on what they call a nigger crew, which is like trash work. You just pick up trash or you'll chip bricks. To, if you got to be in the, in the good crew, you did a lot of construction work. We built a lot of houses and did a lot of roof jobs. We didn't receive anything for it, and it, it consists of long days. A typical day for the boys and girls here at Bethel begins before sunrise. Those who have punishment laps to run can sometimes be found out at 4 a.m., although on the day we were here, there were no punishment laps. Emma spent two years at Bethel. She says laps have been handed out indiscriminately. One of the girls that had asthma in the hospital, she's been in a lot of, a lot of um, pain and everything. They made her run around the lap track anyway, even though she had asthma. How did she do it? She can't, got out of breath. <laughs> I mean, had an asthma attack. Did you ever have an asthmatic uh, who was required to go and run laps? Asthmatic, you mean? Couldn't breathe. Uh, not that I can remember, you know, that... No, sir, I don't remember uh, asthmatics uh, being required to run. If, if, you know, if, if it was, she was very s s slim on her asthmatic. What's your philosophy when it comes to using kids to work? I mean, uh, do uh, serious adult-type work? Basically, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a form of our program here, basically. Now, but if it's outside of here, we always ask the kids if they'll volunteer to go. And so when a court says you're using youth for work gangs, no, I don't see it that way. They might see it that way, but I don't. Have you worked kids from 6 in the morning till 8 at night on work crews? No, sir. No. If I did, it, it, was, it was at least an hour or two hours to get there. And, uh, you know, we had... We had uh, had plenty of breaks in between there. You know, as far as school, uh, we probably miss school to work sometimes, you know. Do you stress education enough? Education is not our main goal, no, sir. Uh, getting these kids' lives straightened out and getting them uh, to know Jesus, that's the main thing.